Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the next episode of Creative Youth Studio, a workshop series aimed at high school students to help further their artistic careers. Uh, I'm very excited today, actually, to be introducing an alumnus from our Summer Shakespeare Studio program who loved it so much that he not only came back twice, but a third time, uh, the third time being our online iteration that we just did a couple weeks ago, actually. Seth Holt is a high school senior, an aspiring actor who aims for Broadway, film, and TV. He's taken over multiple musical theater roles, He's done Marty in Madagascar, Scuttle in The Little Mermaid, and Bert and Mary Poppins, and dabbled in a little bit of Shakespeare, a topic the Old Globe knows a little something about. Um, he's been in Twelfth Night, and for two of the three plays that he did with us, he has written raps for them. So that makes him a very perfect guest for today's program, Hip Hop as a Message. Seth, how are you? I am doing amazing. Thank you for having me here. Hi everyone, uh, I'm so happy to host Creative Youth Studio and to introduce today's guest artist, Mickey Vale. So um, Miss Mickey Vale is an international hip hop artist. She's a teaching artist, community organizer, and a commissioned playwright with San Diego's Old Globe Theater, which you all know well. In 2016 and 2018, she was the DJ and sound designer for the Old Globe's Globe for All Tour and she's performed at multiple venues and landmarks and festivals around the world, from Hollywood to DC to Mumbai and Cairo. She has earned a San Diego Hip Hop Honors Award, a Female Perspective Award, several San Diego Music Award nominations, and is a 2017 Bayard Rustin Civil Rights Honoree. She's also dedicated to the cause as she is to her craft. She uses art as education, and she explores the impact of hip hop culture on race, class, and gender. And her experiences range from teaching in classrooms to performing at social justice events. Um, in fact, in 2017, she served as a cultural diplomat for Next Level Egypt, which was funded by the U.S. State Department. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Mickey. Hi, thank you for having me. And thank so, you for um, that warm, warm intro. That was very nice. Yeah, of course. So um, let's start from the beginning. Uh, how did you start rapping? I started rapping, well, I started with poetry. When I was young, I used to write a lot of poetry. And um, my brother, who is eight years older than me, he and his friends were really into hip hop. They were into break dancing, and my brother was a DJ. So he would make mixtapes, and he'd put instrumentals, hip hop instrumentals on the mixtapes. So secretly, I wanted to hang out with my brother. I really wanted to, but he never would let me. So I would take his mixtapes and I'd, I'd put my poetry over the instrumentals. And that was kind of my way of connecting with him in some, in some way. And I just kind of turned my poems into raps using his instrumentals. Wow, that's awesome. Even from the beginning, you were talented. So um, when did you want to know that you wanted to pursue art as a career? I knew I wanted to pursue art as a career. There was, there was a few significant moments. One was I wrote a song called Off My Chest a long time ago. And a woman in, um, she was on the East Coast. She sent me an email and she told me how much that song meant to her. And in the song, I talked about um, uh, having a, a dysfunctional kind of upbringing. And some things in the song that I, I talked about, she said, really resonated with her. And she said she had never talked about those things with anyone. And I, I realized how powerful um, art in general, but specifically rap is, how, you know, hip hop, how powerful that is. And so that was one, one thing that really made me want to be an artist. And then um, the first time I got paid really well, that also made me decide that, oh, this is something that that could work for me. I performed at San Francisco Pride and um, and they, they took great care of me and it was this huge crowd and it felt amazing and I got paid really well for that and I thought, okay, I can do this. I like this. So yeah. That must have been amazing having someone resonate with your work and respond to it in such a heartfelt yeah. way. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is rap? Well, rap. Um, well, we have a definition here. The, the dictionary definition of rap is a type of popular music of U.S. Black origin in which words are recited rapidly and rhythmically over a pre-recorded, typically electronic instrumental backing. Um, in layman's term, it's rhythm and rhyme over a beat. Um, 
that that definition lives out leaves out rhyme, but rhyme is a very very important part of rapping. And um, so, have you ever heard have you ever heard anyone say uh, spit spit a sixteen? Oh yeah, I've heard of that before. Someone said yeah. Do you know what they mean when they're saying spit a six, spit a sixteen? Yeah, they know. They mean like a spit sixteen bars, right? Of rap. Yeah, sixteen bars. So what's a bar? A bar is like a a line of a line of rap, right? Yeah, it's a line of rap. It's kind of like a, a sentence. So sixteen bars. One bar. It's um. It's broken up into four four beats. So mm -hmm. one, two, three, four. That's a bar. And then two, two, three, four. That's another bar. So when you have 16 of those bars, you have a full verse, a full rap verse. Yeah. And that's typically the, the natural stopping point is 16 bars when you're, you're rapping um, for a, an actual song. But it can be any length. It could be, um, you're, there's really no rules. It could be 24 bars. Your rap could be, could be four bars. It could be 32 bars. It could be any number that, that you feel comfortable. But, Typically, for a, a standard rap song, it usually goes 16 bars, a hook, and then another 16 bars of rap. Nice. That's awesome, learning rap like that. So um, what is social justice? Well, once again, the dictionary definition of social justice is justice in terms of the distribution of wealth, opportunities, and privileges within a society. So in layman terms, that's basically just human dignity and um, equal rights for everyone. Nice. Yeah, social justice is really important in society. Um, mm -hmm. What made you decide to use rap as a tool for social justice? Um, I think I, I love, first of all, I love hip hop. I love rap because it's a way to take your feelings, if you're feeling sad, or you're feeling angry, or you're feeling happy, or, or anything, any feelings you have, you can take those feelings and turn them into something beautiful, turn them into mm -hmm. a piece of art that can be shared with the world or kept to yourself, you know. But um, I think the thing that I've, I've always, I've rapped since I was young, like I said, but I think what kind of tipped the scales for me and kind of made my rap um, shift more toward social social justice oriented was when I went to college and I mm -hmm. I'm from Oxnard California I was born and raised in Oxnard and Oxnard is a beautifully colorful city it's um, predominantly Latinx it's um, there's black people there's Asian people there's white people there's all types of people and then I went to I went away to college after high school and I went to UC Santa Barbara mm -hmm. and it was a bit of a culture shock for me it was a a predominantly white campus and um, there were very very few people of color on campus and during that experience I, I became keenly aware of uh, racial inequities things that I knew existed but I hadn't really zeroed in it zeroed in mm -hmm. on until attending that campus and I was very frustrated and um there were a lot of things I wanted to talk about and I couldn't really, there was nobody I could really talk to, to about those things. So I just put them into, put those issues into songs. Mm -hmm. And, um, and throughout my life, it's just, it's been a way to get those ideas out, to talk about police brutality, to talk about inequities, to talk about, um, just how I'd like to see the world be, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, let me think of some examples of of songs that focus on social justice. You may not know this one. This one might be before your time, but you know Marvin Gaye, What's Going On? Oh, yeah, I know that song. I love you that song. You do? Yeah, doesn't it go like a, um, mother, mother, there's too many of you crying. Brother, yeah. brother, brother. There's too many of you dying. You know we've got to find a way to bring some love in here today. And then it goes, um, Father, Father, uh -huh. we don't need to escalate. Or uh, it goes something like that, right? 
Yeah. Okay. War is not the answer, because only love can conquer hate. Yes, beautiful. Wow. I can't believe you know that. Good job to your parents for making sure you, you stay up on those classics. Um, so that's a social justice song. That's an example of social justice in that song. And it's a beautiful song. It's so beautiful. It's so pretty. However, in that song, he's um, in the early 70s, late 60s, uh, mm-hmm. the United States was at war. There was a Vietnam War. And a lot of Americans were not OK with the war and Marvin Gaye was one of them. And so he wrote that song in protest of the Vietnam War, among other things. But yeah, so that's that's an example of social justice. And that and social justice music has happened throughout our history. Because there's always something to protest. <laughs> there's always something, yeah. you know, we haven't reached a point where we're at a utopia where everyone is treated equally yet. So People have it on their hearts. They have something heavy on their their hearts, and they put it into a song. And I, like I said, I've done a lot of social justice music because I've had a lot of things on my heart and mind. And um, you want to hear something? Yes, yes, I'd love to. Okay, cool. Um, so this song that we're about to play is called "Get 'Em Up," and this is a song by my friend Queen Candy Cole and I that we released in 2014. Wait, you're, you're in this song as well? That poem is the heart. Ooh, I can't wait to hear it. Okay. The ones that feel like there's too much to cope with for Oscar Grant and I'm a UD, y'all know. All the young cats that ain't gonna live to see tomorrow. John Crawford, family's living in sorrow. With you the wrong color, then you living on borrowed time. Eric Garner, he sell for a Kajin Powell. Jonathan Farrell, Trayvon, and Michael Brown. Uh, too many names to list. Being black in America is dangerous. If you down for the card, you better raise your fist. Put down the gang size and bank some real shit. State of Florida versus George Zimmerman. Verdict, we the jury find George Zimmerman not guilty. For all community, we are supposed to be protected by the police, not killed. And we're sick of it. Get your hands out your pockets, man. You better get them up. So that was get them up. What do you think? <laughs> Wow, I'm, I'm really inspired. That was awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, so we wrote that song. Um, I don't know if you remember, there was um, Michael Brown was mm-hmm. murdered by police back in 2014. I believe mm-hmm. it was 2014. We released the song in 2014, but we had actually written it a few years earlier in 2009. Mm-hmm. But when that particular murder happened, we... Um, we just we we were so sad. Our hearts were broken that this kept happening over and over and over again. So we brought the song back, and I kind of updated. I I added Michael Brown's name to the lyrics, and um, and yeah, and we put it out. So yeah, so that's an example of social justice music. Wow. Well, that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, wouldn't it be fun if we could write a social justice rap right now? I mean, yeah. That... We could. You want to? Wait, what? We can we can write one right now? Yeah, we can. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's cool. do it. Um so what do you think of when you think of social justice? From what you, um, you've heard today. When I think of social justice, I think of I think of the world that I'd like to see, like the hope for the future, you know? Okay, cool. The world you'd like to see, hope for the future. I love that. Okay, cool. So this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you got a pen and paper? Uh, or whatever you write with, maybe your phone? Yeah, I can, I can write on my computer. Okay, and if anybody's watching, or, or people in the audience, if you have something to write with, this is a, a quick activity we can do. It's called Six Word Memoir. This is an exercise we do in our playwriting class at the Old Globes um, Community Voices Playwriting class. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of intersecting art forms here. So it's called Six Word Memoir. What is a memoir, you ask? Well, a memoir is a historical account or biography written from personal knowledge or special sources. So basically, a memoir is a story about you. Make sense? Mm-hmm. So it's a story that pretty much only you can tell because you know your life. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to write a memoir. And mm -hmm. you're going to tell your story using only six words, OK? Mm -hmm. Not five, not seven, six. So it could be something very straightforward, like um, I like to wear wigs sometimes. That's six words. Or it could be something more abstract, such as follow the path your heart beats. Does it make sense? So it can be very poetic or it can be very straightforward. And what you're going to write about in this memoir is a time that you felt the most alive. What was mm -hmm. one time that you felt the most alive? Hmm. In six words. Let's take a minute to write something. I'm going to write mine in here. You have something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What did you write about? What did you what What did you write about? Well, I wrote about my experience being on stage. I feel like I'm most alive when I'm on stage performing because I can present myself to an audience, and that just makes me happy. Okay. Cool. So, what are your six words? My six words is on stage basking in heavenly glory. Ooh, that's beautiful. Nice. Okay. So I wrote one, and one of the times I felt the most alive was um, being at the beach and mm. and swimming in the ocean the last time because it's been a while since i've done that and i remember the last time just feeling so alive and looking mm -hmm. up at the sun and thinking yay this is my life this is wonderful so my six words are floating freely waves in my hair mm. okay so now we're going to do it again okay however this time Okay, well, let me tell you. So you're gonna write another six word memoir. And okay. this one, you're gonna tell a story of when you felt, a time you felt the most brave. When was the time you felt the most brave? And you're gonna tell it in six words. However, the trick here is the last word of this line has to rhyme with the last word of your first memoir. Okay. So yours would have to, on stage basking in the heavenly glory, so your last word would have to rhyme with glory. Mine has to rhyme with hair. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a moment and I'm gonna write one too. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay, so what was your six word memoir? My, my six word memoir was playing Troy and telling his story. Ooh, and what, tell, me, tell me about that. Tell me a little more. Well, I did a monologue competition mm -hmm. um, not a while back. And um, I had to play this character named Troy Maxson. It was an August Wilson um, monologue competition. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt like I was telling his story on stage. And um, I felt like I was, I took a step out of my comfort zone to be brave and present to people in a monologue, because I, I haven't really done a monologue competition before. It was just musical theater or, you know, Shakespeare. Yeah, and I actually was there. I saw you in that, and you were amazing. Yeah, you that were there great. too. Thank you. Yeah. OK, so for me, um, one of the times I felt the most brave, I was performing. It was mm -hmm. 2016, and mm -hmm. it was a Black Lives Matter concert that was held at the World Beat Center in Bubble mm -hmm. Park. And it was just a, a beautiful crowd of people, all these beautiful faces, and everyone felt so pumped up and, and ready to fight for our rights. And I remember um, holding my fist in the air, and all these fists in the, in the crowd came up, and it was just a wave of fists, and I just felt so brave in that moment. It felt wonderful. And I felt alive in that moment, so that's a combination of the two. Um, yeah. So what I wrote, my six words, is rocking stages fists in the air mm -hmm. all right well uh, that was awesome let's see yeah. um so you just wrote a rap let's see if we uh, have some responses from the audience um okay okay we have one response from that and um oh, cool. that is um walking the beach picking up shells it seems this one's also about the beach about mm, waves nice. too um why hello ocean i hope you're swell 
How nice. That's awesome. That's very nice. Let me read these all together, okay? Since we, you know, um, came up with them. Let's see. I'll do it to a beat. Okay. On stage, basking in heavenly glory, playing Troy and telling his story. Mm -hmm. Walking the beach, picking up shells. Why, hello, ocean. Hope you're swell. Floating freely, waves in my hair, rocking stages, fists in the air. Wow. Bars. That was awesome. <laughs> Yes. That sounds we really good. wrote a rap. We just, Pretty we much. collaborated on a rap and shout out to um, the person in the audience who sent in those, those two bars. You just, we just wrote a rap? We just wrote a rap. That was a rap. It's a rap. It's a rap. That was a, what is this? It's a six bar rap. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was nice. That was awesome. That was great. <laughs> yeah. So well, if just... there's, if there's any more, we could throw them in there too, and we could just rap all day. Yeah. Well, um, actually, why don't we just wrap this up <laughs> with a little Q and A? You know, we could talk about rapping all day, but I think the audience has some questions to ask us. Um, so let's let's see if we can hopefully um, put them in a bit and then answer them. So, um, let's see. Hmm. Well, responses are coming in right now. Um, the first question is, what if your two lines work best if your two lines rhyme? Hmm. Um, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure they could work together if they rhyme. What if but, your um, two lines work best if your two lines rhyme? That's, yeah, that would, that's the great if they rhyme. For them to rhyme, right? Yeah, that's great if, if they rhyme. And the more words that you can rhyme, together and with rhythm, even better. So let's yep. say, for instance, I'll take my, my, two, my two lines. And we did, a, this was basically a kind of simple rap because we just rhymed the, the last two words of each line. But let's say we changed mine, floating freely waves in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, what could we change the second one? Rocking, rocking. Uh, floating, floating freely, waves in the air, rocking over there, fists in the air. You can add more words to rhyme, and that's even better. It be, you know, there's a lot of different rhyme patterns, and it can get more complex, or it could even be less complex. But the main things, the main elements you want to have in your rap are rhythm. Mm -hmm. You want to stay on beat and rhyme. They rhyme in some sort of way. Yeah. Oh, um, let's see. We have a response. Um, or not a response, but um, another rap from an audience member, and it Ooh, says, nice. fall off, my flesh will end. Or no, why does this have to end? Fall off, my flesh will rend. Ooh, uh, nice. Okay. Um, fall off, oh. my flesh will rend. There's a question for me. So um, the question says, Seth, how did you get into acting? So um, I, have a pretty, I have a pretty funny story for how I got into acting. Um, in middle school, I wasn't really an actor, you know. I was just, I was just trying to get by and making it through. And um, my two friends, um, they were really into acting. They were obsessed with, you know, things like Hamilton and uh, other theater. And they were like, you know what, Seth, you have a really charismatic personality. You should try to do acting. And I was like, hmm, I'm good. I'm gonna stay over here. And uh, they were like, well, seriously, seriously, there's this show, and I think you'd be perfect for it. And that show was Madagascar. And when I went and auditioned and did this stuff, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be terrible. I'll just go ahead and get it over with. Um, but when I did my audition, I felt something, I felt something inside me. It was like a, you're supposed to be here kind of thing, you know? And um, I ended up getting the main part. And that was, that was even better because I was on stage and I felt really alive. I wrote about it um, in the rap that we made. And uh, that's how I got into acting. Nice. I just couldn't stop after that because I loved it so much. That's um, good. And you know what, Seth, you could also get into singing because I liked the way you sang that song. That was nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, let's see. Are there any more responses coming from the audience? Um, hmm. While we wait on... Um, oh, here's oh, one. Okay. Here's a response. Here's a, um, another rap that says, uh, wife, mom, queen, God's starkeeper, hands up, prayer warrior, faith leaper. 
That nice. one was really delving into the faith and stuff. Okay, like so let's it. so let's do something while we're here. While we're here, you have tell me the first one that came in from the audience. I'm gonna. The I'm first one that came in from the audience was, uh -huh. um, why does it have to end? Fall off, my flesh will mend. Fall off, my flesh will mend. Mm -hmm. And then what was the second one? The second one was wife, mom, queen, God's star keeper, hands up, prayer warrior, faith leaper. Faith Leaper. Nice. So I'm going to put those together. Mm. Mm -hmm. Why does it have to end? Fall off. Fall off. My flesh will mend. Wife, mom, queen, God, star keeper, hands up, prayer warrior, faith leaper. Oh my God. Mars. What talent? What talent Mars. Oh, you Maybe guys have talent. Our, our audience has talent. Nice. Oh, there's another question, in, and uh, um, it says, are there any particular benefits rap has for social justice that other forms of art do not? This one might be leaning towards you. That's a fantastic question. Any particular benefits rap has? I, I don't know. I think, um, I think maybe one thing that I, I could say is that mm -hmm. rap is, and I, I'm not trying to stereotype, but rap is is um, tends to be a kind of younger thing, mm -hmm. and I think it kind of speaks to younger generations more than some other forms of music, and mm -hmm. and the benefit of that is be, is because the the children are the future, our youth is the future, and the things we feed them now are the things that they're going to you know carry through their lives, so. In that respect, I'm gonna have to think about that a little more, but that's one. Yeah, that was a really good question. Um, and I, I do wanna add that it's it's actually a gift to be able to use our music as a, a, a message or for social justice purposes. Um, when I was, I did a, a hip hop workshop in Egypt and mm -hmm. we, we did these, we um, had the elements, we did workshops for the elements. There was emceeing, I was the MC facilitator, there was, beat making, there was um, graffiti, and there was break dancing. So we do these workshops for a week, and then at the end of the workshop, we go and have a final performance. So we had a final performance. This was in Cairo, Egypt, and we were in the City of the Dead. And the City of the Dead is basically a, an ancient burial ground, and mm -hmm. people live inside this, this burial ground. So it was a really big deal that we were having a performance there, a, a concert in the city of the dead and they hadn't had anything like that before, especially not hip hop, because hip hop is kind of um, kind of new there. So we had this concert, we put in all this work to have this concert and uh, we had all our students in our workshops come and perform. And in Egypt, it's illegal to speak out about the government. Mm. And one of the rappers during his performance, he said something not so great about the government and we didn't know, but there was um, government officials there in the audience and they shut the whole thing down. Mm. Like halfway through, they shut it down because they are not allowed to speak out about the government. Mm -hmm. Anything bad. I'm sure if they said something nice, it would be okay. But yeah. so I think it, we really have a privilege here that we are able to use our voices in that way and we're not shut down because of it. We have this, mm -hmm. that freedom of speech. So, Ms. Mickey, another question just came in from the audience that mm -hmm. says, can you give us an example of a more complicated rhyme scheme? Um, okay. Huh. You think I do this for my health? MC's my occupation, my operation stealth. Move silently, gracefully, choose my weapons tastefully. Save a little space for me and heaven, mom, coming. Revolution drumming in my ear while I hum and summon spirits of those who ain't here. They mad, seeing fruits of the labor spoiled and called Dad, watching sun spread seeds and never be called dad. That's all I got. Wow. Did you, did you just come up with that? Oh, no, I wish I was that fancy. No, that's, oh. a, <laughs> that's something I already had written. <laughs> that, was, that was awesome. Wow. Yeah, that was so, definitely more complicated than just, you know, the regular bar, bar, rhyme, rhyme. It was like, it was like in the middle of the beat. 
you rhymed. It was crazy. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, there's there's no rules. You can do anything that well, there are rules. Rhythm and rhyme. Keep that in mind when you're writing your raps. Rhythm and rhyme. It's gotta have some rhythm and it's gotta rhyme in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. Um there's another question for both of us, for both. Um, do you have any tips for doing acting professionally without another major source of income or doing rapping professionally without a major source of income? Do you want to answer first? Well, sure. Um, I'd say that it's definitely important to find something else that you love because um, I chose acting as my career and that's a kind of an unpredictable career because like there's no guarantee if you'll get into this show or if you'll be in, in this movie. And um, I think it's important to have a steady source of income, such as um, another job you like. Like, um, for example, I like writing. So I'm, I'm thinking of implementing that to my career as well. And um, I'm also into, um, you know, wo working with people around me. So I could find some way to, um, I could find some way to implement myself in my community and be able to make another source of income besides acting. What about you, Ms. Mickey? Did you have what you said. I think it's always very safe and smart, wise to have some sort of um, steady income while you work on getting to that point where you can, where your art form is your steady income. I agree. So um, another person submitted um, another piece of rap for hey. our rap that I'm says, right in the studio, Throwing paint around in front of groups, soul ground. In the studio, throwing paint around mm -hmm. in front of, of in groups. front of groups, soul ground. Soul ground. Wow. Ari bar bar bars. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, that's awesome. You guys yeah. have some really good ideas. Are there any um, more? No, not right now. I'm sure they're coming in fast though. Okay. Um, there's also another question from the audience, though. There's another mm -hmm. question um, that says, what makes this rhyme scheme more complicated than the previous one? So I think they were asking about the one that you just asked when someone asked you to do a complicated one. What mm -hmm. makes it more complex in mm -hmm. your own words? Well, um, let me think. What did I say? Uh, you think I do this for my help and see my Okay, um, move silently, gracefully, choose my weapons, taste, move silently, gracefully, choose my weapons, tastefully, save a little space for me and heaven, mom, coming, revolution drumming in my ear while I hum and summon spirits of those who ain't here. So it's not just, what makes it more complicated is that it's not just um, one, one rhyme, one word mm -hmm. rhyming at the end of each line. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's groups of words, it's several words rhyming throughout the each bar so it's yeah. it's looping around it's it's um yeah it's just groups of words there's several words sometimes three words sometimes one word broken up into three different syllables mm -hmm. um here's an example so it could be one word that rhymes with one word that rhymes with one word or it could be one word that rhymes with one word that rhymes with three words so i'm going to give you an example mm -hmm. i'm a hip-hop activist not just an actress trying to be a star like an asterisk, don't make me have to smack a chick. So you had asterisk or activist. I'm a hip hop activist, that's one word. Not just an actress. Mm. We don't really say actress, actress, we say actress, but not just an mm. actress trying to be a star like an asterisk. Mm. Don't make me have to smack a chick. Three words. So you make the syllables rhyme. It can get a little more complex. Yeah. But you do what feels right. Whatever feels right is what you do. Mm -hmm. um, here is another, another rap submission, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I write, I wrote, I'm empty. Words will, wait, words fill, feel they kept me. I write, I wrote, I'm empty. Mm -hmm. Words. And words fill. Fill. Feel. Feel. They kept me. Oh no, it's both. It's feel. I mean, it's fill and then feel. Wait, what is that? It's fill, and okay. then it's like a comma, and then feel, and then it says they kept me. Oh, okay. Words fill, feel. They kept me. That was that was awesome. Okay, so um, 
I put it on our, our little Google document here. Do you want to read those back in rhyme mm -hmm. form? Rap form? Yeah. You want me to read all of them together so we can hear our rap so far? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I'll do it to the beat. On stage, basking in heavenly glory, playing Troy and telling his story, walking the beach, picking up shells, fly hello ocean, hope you're swell, floating freely, waves in my hair, rocking stages, fists in the air. Why does it have to end? Fall of my flesh will mend. Wait, why does it have to end? Fall of my flesh will mend. Wife, mom, queen, queen god, starkeeper. Hands up, prayer, warrior, faith leaper. In the studio, throwing paint around. In front of, in front of groups, soul ground. I write, I wrote, I'm empty. Words will feel they kept me. Wow, that was Ooh. awesome. I'm sure hey. you could do it better. I'm sure you could do it better. I, I don't think so, because you did it great. Thank you. That was good. Nice. That's awesome. We have our own rap now from the audience. We have our own rap. Now awesome. all we got to do is throw it over a beat or a beatbox, or we can just do it a cappella like you just did. Mm hmm That's all that's left. Nice. Thank you. Thank you to the audience for submitting those. Those are wonderful. Yeah, these are some wonderful responses, guys. There's some awesome responses. And I'm sure they're still pouring in. <laughs> Someone <laughs> said it can be our theme song. Nice. Hey, what do you think? You could be the, think, um, the theme song for the program. A theme song for the program. That's That would be awesome. Yeah. Just to have that play before the program mm -hmm. or before it starts every time. I That'd think be cool. we should. That'd be awesome. I'm into that. Cool. Um, so that's all the time we have for today, guys. Thank you so much to the audience and thank you to Vietka and the Arts Engagement Department for having me. I had an amazing time. Me too. Thank you so much to Seth for being our guest uh, host today. Um, it's always lovely to have you. You're a regular now. I think you were on Word Up recently and then now you're on here. So he's not, he's not gonna get rid of the globe very easily. We're gonna keep him around. And Mickey, thank you for always being such a great, great, uh, uh, great host. And we learned a lot from history and about music today. And I think I wrote my first memoir, so that was cool. Yeah, thank you so much. Is it okay if the audience contacts you, if they have more raps to send you, or if they have more questions? Um, yeah, please. You can send me an email at mvale, M-V-A-L-E, at theoldglobe.org. Awesome, so you should see that splash right on the bottom of the screen. So feel free to email them or contact us on any of our social media platforms. We'll be back here next week on all of them, including uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll be having Rio Villa join us. She's going to do one on uh, from theater to blogging, and that is about how to be your own brand ambassador, to start a podcast, uh, to start your own travel channel. And so she's our own little star who will teach you all of that. I'm sure it's super relevant, especially now. So we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Take care.